I do see some bites over here. You sure it came from an apple, right? Not from the zoos. No. It's got red bugs. I call it a polo isopod because I've never seen them other than here. This hobby, it gives you the ability to look at your tank and know when something just isn't right. Andrew had that feeling today about the 900 gallon drop down and he wanted to get to the bottom of it. So we had Dunn look into some of the colonies and after a few minutes, they realized they might have a problem. What they found raised some concerns and Dunn quickly notifies Andrew. It's a good thing that we did this. Yeah. Which ones? Which Came ones? This, this pearl berry. On a pearl berry. <laughs> but I don't know where this pearl berry came from. Joe is nearby and hears the commotion. He pops in to take a closer look. He has lots of years under his belt when it comes to reefing and a great eye when it comes to pests. I do see some bites over here. You sure it came from an acro, right? Not from the zoos. No. During Joe's preliminary investigation, he noticed some eggs on the coral as well. He decided to bring the colony back to Polo Lab for Alex the vet to investigate. With the discovery of the eggs, the mission has now turned into finding out if the eggs have hatched or not. It, they look like there's significantly more. Yeah. Like, look in, in that branch in that hole. Yeah. But I'm seeing if there's a hair. If I want to put this back, and then I just want to see once this. Have took, do we have a date when we did this? Because normally it's a 22 day cycle. The reason I'm telling you what I'm telling you is yeah. because I've had frack plugs yeah. that I look for eggs. Yeah. And there's nothing, but I see this like moves of orange film yeah and a week later there's eggs after a thorough look alex the vet finally finds what he's looking for so that's what we're looking for now that alex has found the large line of eggs he can take a look underneath the microscope to determine if they're hatched or not so it looks like these are already hatched so the goal is to kill these and what's the life cycle but if they're not if there's no egg then we don't have any babies yeah, these are all look like they're hatched. The team is on the hunt for more flatworms. Alex the vet continues to dig through some of the coral for more samples. So you be sometimes seeing some organisms glow and it makes it easier to find certain things. After looking through the original colony, he decides to take a look at other coral from the 900 gallon drop down. He finally finds something that piques his interest. In this discovery, it couldn't have come soon enough. It's got red bugs. Red bugs, right. See that little red orange spot moving. With any pest that Polar Reef finds, they always take advantage and document their findings as much as possible. This way they can research it later and develop new protocols to deal with these intruders. The goal as always is to help all of your reef keepers at home. So what I was doing there is I was taking a photo at each focal length and then I'll stitch them together and have essentially like a 3D image of the organism rather than because it's too big for normal microscopy, even though it's super tiny. Um, it's too big to be in a single focal plane. So now I take pictures at each focal plane, and then it gives a more clear image. Um, now I'm just taking a video as well. Now that the team knows what they're up against, they prepare their treatment for their counteroffensive. No pests are safe once Polo Reef has them in their sights. Red bugs treatment is fairly standardized at this point. Um, milbomycin in interceptor is the active component that kills them. Unfortunately, sourcing milbomycin not in interceptor is really difficult, something that we're working on, but the prices are extremely high. Um, so we use, it's essentially dog flea and tick preventative, but uh, the red bugs are essentially ticks for coral or fleas for coral for the matter of fact. Um, so uh, we use this instead. It's not my favorite thing to use, but we do. Andrew and the team decide to leave no coral unturned. The next day, they make the decision to go through all the coral in the infected tank, as well as the quarantine systems. It's a tall order, but there's a lot at risk here. Unfortunately, this is part of the reef keeping process. If any of you at home have encountered some rare pests, we'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Now, let's go back to the battle. Um, so we found some zoa nudies on the glass this morning, so we're going to take all the zoas out, dip them through, and see how badly they're infested. Oh, there's one right there. Do you see it? Right on top of it. 
Yes. There you go. Yep. Big one. Oh, there's another one right there. With the coral from the infected tanks treated, the team now shifts their focus on the quarantine systems. But before they do, Alex the vet finds another creature with a name that doesn't disappoint. I call, them, it's a, I call it a polo isopod because I've never seen them other than here. After finding the polo isopod, Alex the vet takes the opportunity to do some investigating on the protozoa that lives on the skeleton of the stony corals. So there's a ciliate or a protozoa that inhabits stony coral. Is it a problem? We don't know. Do some people think it's a problem? Yeah. Is it treatable? Kinda. I'm, but I'm seeing it in Acropora and Montes that were next to each other. So I just want to get a closer look at what we're doing. The problem is I got this little Monty chip here and I can see the protozoa, those green flecks. The problem is I can't get it out onto the light microscope because they're buried within the tissue, within the skeleton. Jonathan overhears Alex the vet and decides to pop in for a closer look. After describing what's going on, Jonathan proposes a genius idea. Like, I don't even know how to get them out. If you painted the underside of it with a, an acid, dissolved the calcium carbonate. Yeah. I mean, and then you can get it thin enough where it's still encapsulated. But you can... We had ciliates on Montsopora as well as Acropora. I'd like to get some imaging of the ciliates. The problem with the light microscope is the light has to go through the specimen. And the specimen's too thick. So I'm going to use some acid and try to shave down the tissue margin and the skeletal structure so that it's thin enough that the light can pass through and I can see the organisms inside. Um, and that works in theory. I may destroy the, the sample um, and start over, but we're gonna try it. When handling chemicals, Polar Reef takes all the necessary precautions. Once geared up, Alex the vet prepares to take a deep dive using Jonathan's method. The plan is to paint acid on the coral to dissolve some of the calcium skeleton. This will allow Alice to take a closer look at what might be hiding in the skeleton without killing the coral. So we got some muriatic acid. We're just going to dissolve the skeleton uh, to a really thin layer so I can shine light through the specimen. We're just going to dissolve each layer by layer. Alex works with precision to carefully dissolve the skeleton. He has to be very cautious not to completely destroy the coral. So we just finished using the acid to dissolve some of that calcium carbonate skeleton of that Montipora. So we can use that sample for light microscopy. So it's a pretty cool method in terms of thinning out the sample, something we're gonna refine a little bit further in the future, just so we can get some better images for you guys. It's been a full 24 hours since the Polo team has begun their pest battle, and the fight continues into day number two. Things are moving smoothly with the treatment, and the pests are slowly being killed, one coral at a so time. So we've been dealing with a lot of parasites here at Polo Reef the past couple of days. Everything from Acropora flatworms to red bugs to zoa nudies. Fortunately for the red bugs, there are standard protocols and treatments that we've been following um, to, you know, finally eradicate them. The Acropora flatworms and the zoa nudies are a little bit of a different story. We are working on some chemical treatments for their eradication. That's something that we're going to develop further in the future. Right now, those are going to stay in quarantine until we are confident that there are no more pests. We'll see you guys next time. Like any other animal, you can tell with coral when something just isn't right. Andrew had that gut feeling today and decided to act on it. With years of experience and an amazing team, Polo Reef was able to avoid a huge problem by simply looking for the signs. Andrew hopes all of you at home take our reefing experiences and lessons into your own aquariums. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more reefing magic here at Polo Reef. Until next time.